All right, we're uh, ready to start a new job today. This is going to be a porcelain flower uh, made by Beam. Uh, and these are ridiculously thin flower petals. I mean, almost, literally almost as thin as a real flower petal. And as you can see, it's pretty crushed. So this is our uh, job This on this project, to put this flower back together best we can. There are at least 50 pieces here. And I don't know if I have them all. What you see is what I was given to work with. And even the owner uh, thinks it's darn near a lost cause, but I said, let's uh, let's give it a shot and see what, what what we can do with it. So follow me on this adventure while we repair this incredibly smashed flower. Okay, I have a uh, Hickstall here, which is uh, a couple days old, and it's about the consistency of honey. So it's perfect for what I am about to do because I know it won't run out of the place where I'm putting it. <laughs> if it's too thin, it'll literally run, run out of the glue joint. And now I put this in place because it matches up perfectly in there. Literally locks into place. So there's our first piece, which is probably the only easy one we're going to have on this job. I have to make sure I get all the glue out of there because I don't want it interfering with the next piece I get in. Well, let's see if I can get a couple more pieces in here. I'm going to use a little ball of clay to hold these pieces together. Since I can't really put tape on it. <laughs> there we go. Okay. It's an incremental process, a little bit here, a little bit there.
while my other part of the, the flower is uh, curing, I am going to attempt to assemble some of these leaves. I can tell by looking at it right away that uh, I'm missing some pieces. I don't have the piece that goes in here. Uh, the whole, about half of this leaf is gone. I don't have it. Um, and so uh, we just start putting them together through a process of elimination and uh, glue all the pieces I have together and then uh, see what I have left and try to, f like I can fill this for instance. And if I have to, I can rebuild the rest of this flower. It won't be fun, but it's doable. So in the meantime, uh, I have these pieces I know all go together and I'm going to uh, essentially tack them the pieces in place with this very thick hextel. It's just about the end of its working life and just enough to hold it together. And then once this cures, I'll be able to come back and, and put a uh, thin hextel right on the joint and it'll wick into the crack. So, let's just put these together. Yep, I'm going to have to put a piece of tape on that. All right, we set those aside and let them cure. It's a couple days later, and I'm going to glue a couple more petals on here. And unfortunately, we can only do a couple of things at a time on this, and you know, so we don't mess up something else. <clears throat> so I'm going to first. I'm going to tape these two pieces together, and then I'll put this in place. So I'm going to put some tape strips in here.
I've got some fresh Hickstall. I'm going to put right on the crack. And it should wick down into that crack. Okay. Let that sit for a couple days. So I've got my, found my pedal, put my tape in place. This time I'm going to just dab a little of this right on the edge. I mean, as you can see, look how thin that is. So... So that I, this doesn't slump tonight while it's sitting on a shelf, I'm going to put a ball of clay under here just to prop it, just to keep it from falling. Keep it from slumping. If I can get it to stick. <laughs> Okay, and that's all we can do on this for today, and we have to do the same thing many times around here. And it's just a process of elimination until I get them all picked out. I'm probably not going to show it all on this uh, film, but you know, you get the idea. piece of modeling clay under here.
Alright, I've got these three tiny pieces here. I'm going to try to tape it first. And then put the glue on. I changed my mind. Well, I'm going to do two at a time instead of the third piece. Just set that aside for a couple days while that bond uh, cures, and then we'll be back to do a few little more shards until we get it all together.
As I said before, I'm not showing you every little shard that I'm gluing in place. This video would be way too long if I did that. So, uh, but key points along the way, I'm showing you what there is to this. So, uh, anyway, tune in uh, the next time and we'll pick up where we left off. So what I have here is a leaf and as you can see the outline of what the leaf is supposed to be um, this piece is missing uh, so what I'm going to do is see how thin this leaf is so I'm gonna I'm gonna fill this with epoxy paste you usually see me working with epoxy putty um, but I'm going to be using paste for this and what I'm going to do is I back this up with a piece of tape drew my outline on it and I'm going to spread this stuff on here and I'll smooth it out with this paintbrush to blend it into this. It'll overlap this a little bit and that'll provide a little more gripping power so that we're not just holding on to that tiny little edge there. And this will be underneath where you can't see it. This has been repaired before <laughs> with the same technique somebody else did this and probably didn't do it as well as I will here this whole section was missing <laughs> so we've got three quarters of this leaf has been replaced in the last couple breaks and I have another piece here where uh, there's a small portion missing and I'll spread this in there and once it gets hard I'll pull the tape off and then I can shape this will probably overflow here and I'll just reshape the edge of the leaf with a different tool later. So the product I'm using is this stuff. A plus B is the name of the product. It's a fast epoxy paste. I have five or ten minutes curing time. So we just take a little bit of Part A. paintbrush. I'll feather this out.
just let that set. Alright, it's the next day and I've had time, I've had, I let this cure, and it's hard now so I can shape this leaf. So I'm going to draw an outline here with a sharpie. So I have a, a diamond drill bit, a diamond grinding bit in my uh, tool here, and uh, it's got a gas pedal on my foot there, so I can run this. We'll just grind it down to the line. It's a rather flexible epoxy, but I get it. Alcohol on a some alcohol on a Q-tip will take that black line right off. All right, so I, I go, I'm getting to where all I have is little tiny shards left, and um, there's no way to tape them or clamp them or anything. So what I'm, I've done is I've let my Hickstall get to a point where it's thick enough it's still usable and um, it's thick enough that it will hold the piece in place so it's kind of like Vaseline right now very very thick I'll have Vaseline or honey and so I'm gonna put a little bit of this on this edge tiny little bead of this stuff and hopefully that can you get a shot of this plate these are my little shards <laughs> that I have left and I'm going to glue this one into place right now. Okay. So, I'm hoping this will just enough to hold it. Oops. The surface tension of this hickstall should be enough to hold it just like that. Okay. All right, I'm on the opposite side of this now. I gotta get this in place. without 
uh, disturbing the one I glued on a minute ago. <sighs> okay. it into place. There we go. Okay, well that's about all I can do today. Uh, if you look down at the plate here you can see I, some of these won't go back into the place where they came from because um, the piece that it hoped that, that it would glue to is either missing or enough of it is missing that I can't glue it into place. So in other words, there's a piece missing between this and where it gets glued on. And uh, anyway, I'm gonna, I, I do this, uh, I'll have to let this sit for a couple of days uh, in the state that I just did and then I may put that in the hot box to, to uh, speed that up again. And then on the third day, I can come back and glue one or two more pieces in. And we just keep doing this until they're all gone. Um, or I have nowhere else to glue things to. And then I'll come back and I'll fill all these little cracks. Can you see these? All these little tiny cracks in here have to be filled and leveled. And they're all over the place. So. Um, you know, we still have a ways to go. Uh, this is super, super tedious and microsurgery in a way. <laughs> All right, so we'll see you in another day, another few days. All right, so we're gonna. It's been a a day or two until my uh, the last couple pieces that I bonded in place are. Um, enough that I'm not going to move them bump them out of position while I work on some other pieces and so I've got a piece that goes in here <clears throat> then I want to uh, put a piece of tape in place first so that the glue won't get under it Preventing it from sticking. Or gluing the tape in place. Alright, so now I've got my another batch of Hickstall which has been sitting around for a couple days, getting thicker to a honey like consistency. Put a little on a toothpick. Got another one close by here. Put my bonding agent on here.
All right. It's, it's another day now, and I've the the pieces that I glued on. Yeah, two days ago are cured, and now I'm gonna glue a couple more tiny pieces in place. And I'm gonna need a piece of tape on here, so I'm getting it ready. All right, Let's see if we can get this in place here. Okay, now I've got almost all my petals and little pieces put in. There are only a, a few exceptions, but now I'm reduced to the only thing left are, are little pieces like this, where there's a, there's a flake off the end of this petal, and there are a bunch of them. This is one of the larger ones, <clears throat> and I have a technique for uh, dealing with that, which I'm going to show you today. Okay, in order to do this, I, I'm going to back up uh, my placement of epoxy on that pedal with a piece of tape. Uh, but the tape is too sticky, and I'm afraid that when I go to pull the tape off, it's going to pull the fill off or pull the pedal off. So I'm going to make it less sticky. And I re the way I do that is I just stick it to my apron or my t-shirt stick it down, pull it up, and you end up getting lint on the back of there, and it, it seriously diminishes the stickiness of the tape. Okay, so I've got my detact tape, and I'm gonna put it on here. Try to get it to stick as well as I can. Okay. Okay, so this is the product I'm using. It's a it's a plus B is the brand. Uh, it's a, a paste as opposed to the putty. So this is sort of like toothpaste consistency. And it's a five minute bonding action, so it works pretty quick. All right. So now I just mix it. I'm gonna work fairly quickly here. Just put my finger behind that tape just to give me a little added insurance here. Get a little of this stuff. Put it on the edge here. Feather it out. And now I'm going to take water plain old water on a paintbrush and I'm going to use that to feather this 
out to zero. So we don't have a, a, a lip or a bead on, here, on this edge. Most epoxies are workable in water. And so I've got a nice ragged edge on there. And when I'm done, I'll be able to just peel this off. Okay, so I'm going to do some more fills today. But at first, I want to take off the tape from what I did yesterday. And it's try to get this tape off without ripping the pedal off. And it gently. bit by bit because even though I detacked the tape I'm sticking it to glue so <laughs> and it's coming off with such a tenuous grasp of this fill on here it only has a tiny little edge to grab on but there's my fill and I'll trim this up so it looks a little neater but I like the ragged edge on it Okay, so I'm going to go here where I, I've already put my tape on a couple more areas where I want to do some small spots today. And as you can see, all the cracks around here, this is, this is bonded on here, and the crack isn't, isn't perfect. This is all going to get filled when I'm done, but I'm, I'm waiting until I get all the stuff into place before I go around and doing all the fills. So, you know, don't worry, those will be dealt with. Okay, so I'm going to mix up my glue and then we'll come back in in a moment and apply these areas. All right, put my stuff on here. So I want to make sure I get it right up against that lip. But I don't want to move my, bump my tape accidentally and then get my epoxy between the tape and the flower. I'll end up gluing it on. If I have to use my finger, I'll do that. Okay, now the paintbrush with a little water on it. And I can blend this smooth. Get a look at that. That looks great. Okay. Okay, so you've seen me do several of these now. There are probably a half a dozen more of these missing chips that need to be filled the way you just saw me do. I'm going to do more of those, but I'm not going to make you watch it. So we'll come back when we start doing some of these fills. On, on the crack lines. 
Okay, so <clears throat> I need to cut a groove in this stem so that I can put an armature in it to rebuild. It's, it's supposed to look like this stem. Oh, he's coming off here. So I need to cut a groove in there to cement a armature in there. So here we go. cement a wire in there and we'll build up a stem around it so um, back on this the flower here um, I'm still I've got all the pieces that were uh, all the shards glued back in place filled missing spaces and I'm working my way into the finer and finer stuff then right here for instance you can see I filled in a, a hole with my liquid epoxy but I still have some crack lines showing and the problem is <clears throat> this thing is so so delicate I mean these are thinner than potato chips so the, the millet putt putty is fairly stiff stuff and if I try to push this on here with some sort of a metal tool there's a good chance especially on the ends here it's a good chance I'll just snap off the piece I glued in here and we'll be starting over again. Uh, now I can dilute the millet putt with water <clears throat> and make it more paste-like instead of putty <clears throat> and I could probably accomplish what I just described I would try to do. But then I would, once it hardened, then I would be back to uh, metal tools like files filing on the millet putt to smooth that out. And again, uh, very, very easy to break at this point. So I'm trying something I never tried before, and I'm pretty sure it's going to work. And uh, I did a little bit of an experiment yesterday on this, and it looks like it's going to work. So I'm going to go with it, because I'm able to, I will be able to um, sand it or file it down uh, without using a file. I'll have some... Uh, milli or some micro mesh, new micro mesh uh, things to work on that. And how I'm going to accomplish that is with this stuff. This is a, a modeling paste. Brand doesn't matter. They make all different kinds. A lot of it has texturing in it, um, but this doesn't. This is smooth, and. Um, uh, some painters like to have a um, a textured surface to paint on, very, very highly textured. With like, and, uh, and this stuff works almost like cake icing. You could uh, you could build your um, it'll it'll hold a peak if you build up a peaks and sharp uh, spiky textures. Like as you can see inside here, it'll stay like that. It'll dry like that. And it dries almost clear, uh, and then and it holds paint very well too. So, I'm going to use this as my uh, filling medium, uh, and I've already tried it, 
on the bottom for instance here I had some a lot of cracks showing along here and I just painted this stuff on like here's a crack right there for instance and I'll get some of this on my brush and paint it right squeeze it right into the crack right there and now it doesn't fully fill it I can spread it around and if I need to, I can come back later when this is harder and add more until that's smooth. And I get a rather nice fill there. And here I'm going to go over what I went over yesterday and further smooth that. I'm just doing it for demonstration purposes here. We don't really need to do that to the bottom of these flowers. But it's, it's a lot easier to see what I'm doing if I do it down here where the camera can see this. So that's what I'm going to do to hide all those crack lines on the top side. So let's go back to that area I was showing you original, originally. And here it will go. See, I can get my paintbrush right under the leaf. And just smooth it right into the, the step of that crack. And it pretty much just disappears. And this is also very responsive to water. It has a, uh, on a microscopic level, it, it's not smooth. It's sort of a grainy, it, but it gives a nice tooth, as they say, to for the paint to grip. I've got some lint sticking there. So that's what I'm going to go around and do that to all the little spots around here that uh, need this. So I'm trying out my new uh, micro mesh swabs on a stick. <laughs> this is uh, 1800 grit and I'm gently sanding the modeling medium that, I, that I've applied on the last clip. This is working rather well. I don't know if you'll be able to see what I'm doing here in the in the video, but it's working. 